Hi, I'm Kai Herman. I'm a radiologist from Berlin, and today I'm going to present case 31 of the Azas online case library. This patient attended our outpatient department already for more than a decade. The diagnosis of axial spondyl arthritis was established long ago. The patient has inflammatory back pain since his age of 15 and during the disease he received many different NSAIDs and also biological DMARDs. But I think to tell you more about these medications it's more the task of the rheumatologist. What did trouble us was his pain in the mid thoracic region and we were concerned whether there were some complications of the long-standing axial spondyl arthritis or if there was still some inflammation in that site. So we performed an MRI of the spine and later on also a low dose CT. But let's start with this X-ray image. This X-ray image is the so-called Ferguson view. So there is a 30 degree angulation to delineate the sacroiliac joint to a better extent. And this X-ray was taken about 10 years earlier than the uh, MRI and uh, CT images I will show you later. You can see that there are some, um, I enlarge it a bit for you, you can see that there are some sclerosis, especially, the, especially in the ileum on both sides. And there's also some blurring and irregular contour of the bone on both sides. So there is sacroilitis grade 3 on both sides and uh, therefore the diagnosis of axial spondyl arthritis was established and uh, at that time it was called ankylosing spondylitis. The uh, MRI images um, many years later are showing here we have the T1 weighted sequence and we can see there is a lot of um, um, there's a, a lot of uh, fat content in the in the bone marrow. The joint contours are maybe a little bit irregular, uh, especially if you if you enlarge it a bit maybe. But it is really hard to see because uh, we do not have a vibe sequence or some other uh, form of cartilage sensitive sequence. There might be some bright spot here which which uh, is compatible with backfill. Looking uh, at the stir sequence to search for active changes we can see the change, uh, the, the finding here. We see that there is no bright signal next to the sacroiliac joints so there is a negative stir sequence and there's no active inflammation. There's a third sequence that was acquired at that time and this is uh, a sequence that is only done in some institutions and this is a fat saturated proton density uh, weighted sequence. You, so you see there is some T2 uh, bright signal in the cerebrospinal fluid that means there is some uh, fluid signal showing up as bright signal and otherwise fat is suppressed. So it is comparable to a stir sequence, but it is, however, not really a T2-weighted sequence. It's a proton density-weighted sequence, so it's an intermediate weighting. And you can see that there is this dark area in the alum on both sides, which is due to the fat suppression. So the fat next to the joint uh, is suppressed uh, in the sequence and therefore showing up dark, which can be mistaken for sclerosis. Some months later, the patient then came to the consultation and an MRI of the spine was, uh, was requested and uh, this is the result. So you see that it's an MRI of the entire spine. We have, um, we have a depiction of the vertebral bodies from the second uh, vertebral body of the spine till the uh, sacral bone. So that's uh, the advantage of modern MRI machines that you can have these 
fused images and, and have uh, all the good overview uh, to the vertebral bodies. And you can see that there's in the lower part of the thoracic spine and the upper part of the lumbar spine, there are some lesions and they are our focus uh, today for interpretation of this case. So you see that is a T1 weighted scan. You can appreciate it because the fluid is dark and fat content, for instance, here in the subcutaneous area or in the uh, mesenterical uh, area is bright. And you see there is also these uh, lesions of high signal intensity in these uh, vertebral bodies. So they are also uh, uh, fat lesions in the, in the uh, vertebral body. And there's one segment here between the 10th and the 11th thoracic vertebral bodies that has a different signal intensity. So it is dark on T1. And um, that is already a sign for uh, inflammation at this, at this point, or at least for bone marrow edema. And we need to check on the other sequences about the behavior of this segment. Okay. Looking at the uh, next, um, at the next um, MRI sequence, we can see that here we now have the fluid as a bright area, so that's a D2-weighted sequence, but we also see the fat very bright. So it's not a steer sequence, but rather it is a regular T2-weighted sequence without any fat suppression. So you see the, the fat lesions in these lumbar vertebral bodies and also in these thoracic vertebral bodies is showing up right. And also the lesion which is showing up dark here is now somewhat brighter. So we can assume some fluid content within this segment. In order to really um, prove it, uh, it's best to have a fat suppressed T2 weighted sequence and we have acquired such a sequence which you can see here and that's now a still sequence and you see there's some very intense bone marrow edema in the T10, T11 level of this uh, spine and that is the only segment that has this pattern in, in this patient. So we, uh, we, 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 we do now see that this uh, segment shows edema. So the differential here is uh, either a spondylodiscitis as part of axial spondyl arthritis. Um, it could also be degenerative change due to um, mechanical overload in this uh, segment or uh, degeneration and also a fracture Maybe a fracture would not look, look like this because the two vertebral bodies are affected and the disc is in between. But um, maybe some other conditions uh, may also play a role. And uh, to, to say the least, also septic spondyloarthritis, uh, septic spondylodiscitis might, uh, might be a differential, but it's not really a differential because there's no mass effect of uh, within the disc, so there's no pus in the disc, so it is very unlikely that this is septic uh, spondylodiscitis. We were uh, not sure whether this is a mechanical problem or if, if that is inflammation, so we performed a low-dose CT, and here the next series are the result of this low-dose CT. Low-dose CT is performed in, in, in axial slices, and then you do reconstructions and um, here we present reconstructions in the oblique coronal, in the coronal and in the sagittal uh, orientation, slice orientation. And I'm uh, going directly to the sagittal uh, reconstruction and here you can see that while the lumbar levels, they look normal, we, we see now that the T10, T11 level has already some bone fusion. If I uh, enlarge it here, you can see that uh, there is new bone growing through the disc. The disc height is decreased. Also in the adjacent level, we see the new bone growing into the disc. We have a full fusion in the T9, T10 level and also in the T8, T9 level. 
And there's also some sclerosis still here. So we have new bone formation in the disc and also in the adjacent bone. And there's no sign of uh, insufficiency fracture. The facet joint looks good. There's no fracture line in the posterior elements. So this is a typical Anderson lesion or spondylodiscitis in axial spondyloarthritis. You can also appreciate the finding in the coronal um, in the coronal reconstruction. Here you can see the growing bone through the disc, and the uh, uh, reconstruction of the sacral joint confirms some partial ankylosis in this patient. But uh, there's only few sclerosis, so we can assume that sclerosis has already uh, uh, already been. Um, uh, decreased or is, is, is less freak, is less prominent due to the long-standing disease and osteoclast activity. Okay, so this uh, uh, CT was very helpful in this case because we could uh, prove that there is no complication um, of the disease present here. The, that is, there's no fracture of the bamboo spine, there's no degeneration of that segment but rather this is uh, still an active uh, inflammation with, with concurrent new bone formation that leads to the pain. And uh, therefore we uh, could adjust our uh, therapeutic uh, regimen and, um, and uh, treat uh, the patient accordingly. I hope you um, could learn a bit by studying this case. I recommend uh, studying the case uh, on your own pace uh, after seeing this video, going through all this uh, uh, series again to uh, search carefully and compare the, uh, uh, the findings with our split screen feature uh, and compare, for instance, the STIR sequence with CT or the CT with the T1 weighted sequence. And I also recommend uh, uh, trying to see uh, 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 the, sec the, the lesions highlighted with our overlay feature. So we, uh, in, in some of the sequ uh, sequences, we, we uh, included some overlay drawings uh, for you to understand how uh, the lesions are named. So thank you for watching and uh, let's wait for the next month and the next case. See you and bye bye.